Hello, welcome to California Reading Association virtual conference, Just Imagine. We are here imagining how to extend word study into reading, writing, and talk. My name is Annie Itner, and this is my colleague, Donald Bear. We have some contact information to share with you so that when you are finished watching our presentation, if you are interested in handouts or activities, you can go to donaldrbear.com. You can also email either one of us. Let me just introduce myself a minute. My name is Annie Itner. I'm an assistant professor at Western Oregon University and my colleague, Donald Bear, Professor Emeritus Literacy Center Director at Iowa State University and University of Nevada, Reno, also lead author of Words Their Way. We are excited to share with you the objectives for our video today. We are going to start by offering an overview of some important components of developmental word study. From there, we take one of the components that we think is useful to imagine some new and um, tried and true ways of extending and transferring word study um, in our classrooms. I want to let you know that this presentation is full of photos, images, and concrete ways and ideas that you will be able to extend and transfer word study in your classroom. So we're really excited to share with you a lot of photos gathered over the years, extending and transferring word study. Additionally, finally, we have lots of ideas for how to do word study in person, in our classrooms in person, and with some digital affordances online. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Donald. And I'm going to talk, thank you, I'm going to talk briefly about developmental word study just to give the developmental perspective. Uh, at the top, you see that I'm talking about the synchrony of literacy development, how reading, writing, and spelling are interrelated. And so our word study instruction is integrated. And so there are five stages of spelling and five stages of reading. And we've talked about this in our other materials quite a bit, and you can find this. You can see the rough grade level equivalence to these stages. So why do we do word study? <laughs> because we want our students to be readers and writers. And becoming literate depends on the fast, accurate recognition of words in text and fast, accurate production of words in writing so that they have time to make meaning. And so developmental word study is active. We, we teach explicitly with hands-on activities, the vital skills necessary to excel at word recognition, spelling, and vocabulary. So I, I want to put in perspective where these extend activities fit. I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures in a minute, but that is, uh, we may start with a sort. We, we start with a list of words or a group of pictures, and that's what you see there. And we do a lot of sorting, as you may know. But we start with a demonstration of a lesson uh, of the activity. Uh, and that's where we spend 10, 15 minutes. And in that 15 minutes, we're seeing our students try the sort as well. They're sorting and checking their work. And then they talk about why they sorted the way they did. They, they need to think about what, they're, what they have learned. And then finally, they need a lot of practice. And that doesn't have to be supervised by us, the teachers. It is supervised, but we don't have to watch it directly. So there are areas of the room that I'll share with you in just a moment. But this talk is really looking at extend activities. And so here are some family pictures, so to speak, of teachers demonstrating on the first day. Uh, that was a pre uh, kindergarten, uh, I believe. Uh, this is a fifth grade, a, a second grade, another fifth grade teacher, a fourth grade teacher. And these teachers are demonstrating a seventh grade teacher. 
And here's me, I'm demonstrating with the flip teaching. We're all doing a lot more demonstrating these days in very brief uh, or 10 minute uh, at most uh, demonstrations. Uh, the videos I keep to five, six minutes. So these are the extend activities uh, that we're thinking about and we're going to concentrate on several as you saw at the beginning. Just a few slides on routines and schedules. Uh, I'll open up the handout and put more in, but I just wanted to show you that in the primary grades, we think of circle time with teacher, and that's your small differentiated word study. And the center and the seat work is where they will do these extend activities that we're going to show you today. And so here is a weekly schedule, and you can see the types of activities that students will do independently or with a partner. You see on Tuesday, they'll do their first speed sort. On Wednesday, they'll do a word study notebook, a blind sort, a resort. These are activities that we need to teach the students over the first couple of weeks of school. I love this one. This is a grading form where the student is grading themselves. And you can see the types of activities that we expect them to do uh, each week independently and with partners. And it also includes writing, editing uh, it, their writing for uh, spelling as well. And this is an upper grade uh, routine. And you can see uh, that the individual activities are repeat are, are in the second line row. So Annie, I think you're going to share with us some extend activities. Thanks, Donald. Okay, from here, we've decided to highlight a few different ways that um, we can see extend and transfer moving into your classroom. So one of the classic examples for extending is a word hunt. So word hunts are designed to be a space where students are looking and applying what they're learning during their word study time so they can make connections between what they're spelling and what they're reading. And so, as you can see here, here's just um, a classic word sort that a group of students might be um, working through for a week. As a teacher, there's a few different ways to um, do a word sort or, or a word hunt in your classroom. There are print and digital options. So in this um, image here, you can see a student specifically has a book from a classroom library. And with that book is um, a, a word study notebook where the student is recording words that they find from their um, word study sort for the week. So classroom library certainly is a great space um, to, to do a word hunt. You could also do this collaboratively. And we have some slides in a little bit where you can see how um, a small group of students could also do a word hunt together. Maybe the with Epic, you're, you're saying. Yes, I think. that's right. The next yeah. image, um, the next slide mm -hmm. rather, has a screenshot of a website called Epic. And Epic, um, for those of you who know or don't know, is a free online resource for teachers. Um, and there are a lot of controlled texts as well as um, traditional texts as well that students or teachers can choose from. And so this is a great way if you're if you're wondering and if looking for more options for your students to have texts in the classrooms to use EPIC. Um, again, you can see here that the students could, um, in this digital, digital text, sometimes they can highlight words or circle words so that you can also see how the students are finding words um, in their classrooms or based on the words that they're studying. One of the great things I wanna make a point to say about EPIC um, or in general about word hunts is that word hunts are a really good opportunity for you to connect word study across the curriculum. If you're a first grade teacher or um, who is studying plants in their environments during your science um, block, then it's a really good time for you to bring in those words that you're studying um, during word study during the curriculum. So EPIC has that capacity. I'm sure your classroom libraries as organized by genres also have that sort of capacity as well, but this is a good digital resource for word hunts. 
This is just an example of a fifth grader looking in a book and writing the uh, words that he finds into his word study notebook. Same yeah, with this can, child. Right, this is such an active, um, you can see how active word hunts are and the resources that students need to do that. And this is independent at her seat. And you can see at the bottom, she's writing in the re reflection that goes with the sword. We also want to encourage student to student talk. And learning is always enjoyable with our neighbors. I, yeah, I love this next picture. These students are, um, it's a great image of students who are um, engaged in a word, um, in a um, letter sound. Um, sort. What this image demonstrates is the importance of making sure that students have um, that are that are that we plan for our student to student talk. So we don't want to just say, okay, go talk to your partners about the words that you're learning. While that could be okay sometimes, in order for our students to really dig into the words that they're learning, it's important to give them a structure to learn. And so here I've said, it's important to plan for a talk task. You can see the students saying things to each other like, what patterns do you see? Or this student says, I think that word is, and then you're modeling too how to give feedback to each other. I agree, that does go under that category. So. We want to encourage you to plan for that talk time. Another way that you can um, plan for talk time as well as collect evidence of how your students are doing is to use Flipgrid. Uh, Flipgrid is also a free tool that um, students as early as kindergarten can use. And what students do is they record themselves um, based on a prompt that you might give them. So here I just took a screenshot of um, a, a word study that students are studying throughout the week. And this teacher has said, let's make up a story together. You could have a couple students talking about the words and recording it. You can also give feedback to students on Flipgrid. So that's a good way to collect evidence. Um, another talk task that you can use for student to student talk is a similar video type um, option Again, a free, at least at the basic level. Um, and the next slide is um, Seesaw. And Seesaw also encourages teachers to provide a little bit of a direction and then has a recording option for students. Students can record what they're doing, how they're sorting the words, and then how they're finding the words in a word hunt. And then teachers can give um, feedback. So another cooperative way to students recording themselves, teachers giving feedback. S this Teaching students how to talk to each other, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. And I was just gonna point out too, as you can see the student is holding um, a, like a talk um, stick. So all of those resources are important for students, especially in the earliest grades to teach them how to talk to each other. I sort of like the nose marks on the arm there. Yeah. <laughs> I like this slide because I, I took this one in a preschool setting, uh, Head Start, and uh, I call these proximal partners. This child is demonstrate. We want students to work together so they can show the, each other how they work through mistakes. And so this child is trying to track the little girl and she hasn't got it down quite yet. Uh, she's a little off, but the boy can see things and can learn from her mistakes. Well, this these next opportunities to extend and transfer um, are blind and buddy sorts. We have some images to show you, um, as you can see here in the next slide, that two students are um, doing a letter sound sort together. They're either doing a blind or buddy sort, you can't really tell necessarily here, but one person um, describes um, the picture and then the other student um, moves it into the correct category. Um, also at the upper grades, students can do blind writing sorts. You can see this is a small group table working here to do it either in partnerships or as a small group. Um, the next several images also show um, 
older groups of students, upper elementary, even middle school students doing blind and buddy sorts together, um, recording them in their notebooks and explaining what they're doing as they're doing their sorting. Here, this looks like a picture of a, um, a student doing a word hunt perhaps. And in this picture, and I just wanna just comment how you can do either digital or print. Some of the photos we've just shown you are um, students using their, um, their actual word study cards to do blind sorts. Um, and as you can see here, this is a screenshot where students are taking turns calling out words to each other. So you can see this, um, this student is likely the person who's calling out the words, asking students to write the words um, in each category. Another digital um, option for doing blind and buddy sorts is using Jamboard. This is something that I certainly started using a lot in my classrooms last year and can be done again from kindergarten up into the to the older grades. So you can um, ask students each individually to take a page or um, have them sort based on um, on words that you've already brought up on digital on the on the resource for them. So Jamboard. These are just good... some kids. I'm sorry. Go ahead about Jamboard. Oh, yep. That's it. That's good about Jamboard. You can go ahead. <laughs> and these are three boys uh, uh, doing a speed sort, actually. And uh, they're working together on the floor. We're working for independent activities that they can do together. Here are two kids playing a word study game. Uh, these children are actually sorting together. Uh, and uh, they were asked later on, uh, it was a little tricky, but we figured it out. And they work together and they talk to each other while they sort. You can see them talking together in, in this. What is that AI stuff? Uh, I call this the summertime armpit sort. Um, these kids are on the floor sorting together. And it looks like they're working pretty hard playing games together. Annie, why don't you go ahead and take the word study notebooks or am I? Uh, every child has a word study notebook. Go ahead, if you like. Exactly. Uh, they hunt uh, certainly students have their own word study notebook. Have you seen in some of the, um, in some of the images, they either, um, they can do this in their own spiral notebook um, or composition notebooks. Um, also places to write so that students can extend what they're learning. So they, every child has a word. We, we really start them at the middle of first grade when they can write fairly comfortably, but they continue. We may call them a journal. We may call them a vocabulary notebook, but we need a place where students store and write down and think about their word study. So this is a first grade child looking with her word bank. Um, writing the sorts into their word study notebook. So here's a sort that the child did and then would write into the word study notebook. We always have an oddball category as well. And we reviews the, review these as well to see um, if they want to change anything. And you can yeah, see the reflect pardon me, the reflection at the bottom. Uh, all of these words say their name because they got two vowels. Go ahead. Just so much, we hope that this is eliciting some great ideas for you and the systems you have in your classroom already so that you can kind of start making connections to what this looks like in your own classroom. Exactly. These are just sort of family pictures that show you reflection in a word study notebook. Uh, you can see that the children bring their word study notebooks uh, where they have gone on word hunts, et cetera, and they talk about them and they add to them. So they really are something that you look at when you bring the small groups together. A fifth grade, sixth grader writing his sort into his word study notebook. 
This is a high school teacher, and you can see the contract that the child has stapled to the word study notebook. Uh, this is a word study uh, that I did with students, and uh, I find they find an interesting word, and then we explore it, and then they share it the next day or so. Uh, for me, I didn't know what bolo meant, and so it's really quite uh, I don't always know what word study the older students are going to bring in with their vocabulary study. All right, well, I'm gonna show you some images of what charting looks like in the classroom. So you can have some tangible ideas of how students put these, um, put their words together um, in visual representations. You can see this gr small group of students collaborating um, on a chart, each student taking a different marker. And um, perhaps this could have been even a blind or a buddy sort that they're adding to. So these collaborative visual representations of the sorts. In the next picture, um, you can see that students are not only just writing the words down in the sort, but then they're also um, indicating the consonant vowels and vowels, which is an important aspect of the demonstration aspect of the lesson. And so that students know um, how the words are put together. This is another great, just, these are just active. I can see so much action in these, um, in these anchor charts and these ways that students are moving about um, talking with each other about words and, and indicating that they are understanding the elements of the patterns that they're studying each week. Some next pictures, let's see. EL, comparing EL and LE. And these are uh, Nikki's work, I, or no, that's... Uh -huh. <laughs> Donald's this got is a, a big chart. word study family, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is a chart of children who wrote a, a list of words on the left of words that have O-Y and O-I, and you can see their names at the top. And why do some words have O-Y and other O-I? And you can see their thinking at the bottom, and it makes for a great display. This is in a fifth grade classroom, and this is just a, 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 a chart of... Uh, vocabulary related to horrible things, huh? <laughs> Good for thanks, uh, for Halloween this time of year. Uh, yep. A brutal, cruel, frightened. You can see where they're going. Here's a root tree and you can, we have, uh, you can just make a, 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 a template of this and use it for different roots. And so you might demonstrate with this and then have students fill in their own. Same with this. You're looking at the uh, root duct uh, and then other words that have that pattern, that root. Uh, these are fifth graders uh, or sixth graders. Uh, and they had learned that T-A-I-N at the end of the word means to hold. Uh, it also, T-E-N is the root in the middle of a word, uh, but here they're looking at uh, T-A-I-N uh, for the most part. Although on the left, you see T-E-N uh, with bitten and kitten. Uh, and we could check these uh, as well, but you can see what they're learning. And on the left, you can see uh, Tain to hold and their uh, observation uh, at the top left. And then they display their work. Well, those um, previous slides were such a good introduction to vocabulary because as we know, it's important to teach vocabulary in the earliest, earliest grades, but these upper elementary words that we can see bring in a lot of opportunities for students to use this academic and content specific vocabulary, offer word study, a wonderful space to um, increase vocabulary. And so, as you can see in the next slide um, with the word sorts, here, um, these group of students are studying specific um, words that need a lot of digging into. So again, increasing academic and general vocabulary, 
one of the best ways to do this, especially for words of this sort, is to create spaces where students can find photos and images and can see these words in use. One of my favorite resources recently is called Book Creator. And as you can see here, I made this, um, this poster using the HYD and you Google um, images and it comes up and students can make these small digital books that um, reflect the words that they're learning. So another great way for students to build what they're learning um, through images and to be able to talk mm -hmm. about those. Uh, this is just a word web and the students uh, examining UNIS one. And just look at all, when we teach one word, we're teaching 10. And so you want to get these other words out there that have these roots uh, so that they can see them. Look at all that vocabulary. Uh, here's one on emancipate. And here I, I developed this and the kids would then unpack it themselves. So they need plenty of practice in doing these. These are not so easy. These are upper level, but you can see E meaning out, man. Look at all these hand words for man. And CIP means to grasp. So what does emancipate mean when you put these elements together? So we're looking at vocabulary development uh, as well, and also looking at common phrases. Uh, just quickly, uh, uh, these are general academic words that you can find uh, related words to study. Um, and so I'm sorry, if I look at the word an uh, analysis, you need to collect a bunch of other words with analysis in them. Um, and so you, you just don't want to look at one word. Uh, these are online resources, some of our favorite websites that are mostly free uh, by etymology you uh, have to look at. Uh, here is uh, onelook.com and I was working with SYN with students and those are all hot links that take you to 20 dictionaries and they only give you the first thousand words with SYN and they mean together but Really? Let's unpack that and see. Another Visi Words is a wonderful website to consider. Uh, as Annie mentioned, the Google Images is wonderful to use. Uh, in this case, I was looking at the word treasure. Membeam is an, uh, another one that you can use to look at roots and prefixes. And one of the best is uh, online E-T-Y-M online, etymology uh, dictionary, and it will be very useful to you. So to close, Annie, tell us, we want students to demonstrate with each other what they've learned. Right. Um, yes, Donald, and actually, could you, um, my screen isn't showing, if you could just click, there you go. While Donald keeps clicking through the slides, let me just finish up by making sure that um, we know that one of the most important ways that we can move students word study forward is to give them feedback. And so when students demonstrate to us what they've learned, when they reflect on what they've learned, we can provide them feedback and um, move them to the next um, to the next um, place that they need to go. So demonstrating what you know is the end of the word study um, lesson plan format. I've showed a few different ways that you can do this with video using Seesaw or Flipgrid um, or other ways that students can record each other or you can move around to the groups and listen to students as they sort the words um, and demonstrate what they know. And here's a little fourth grader and not so well, but she's demonstrating what she learned about planets in a concept sort, and then she's sharing it with the rest of the group. So we want to thank you for joining us. I think we have a slide with our contact information. You'll find a handout and you'll also find um, uh, other um, materials for you at the website that you see there. Annie, thank you so much for joining me and it was fun working with you. Thank you, Donald. We look forward to hearing from you and hearing your word study stories. 
Thank you. Happy sorting.